Hello and welcome back to my Factorial 1.0 tutorial series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again guys. And uh, I've done just a tiny little bit of work here since last episode. Just a very, very small amount uh, of setting up a couple more coal miners here on this line to feed our steel. Uh, I added another power pole here and then I've got our iron connected. Uh, it looks like I actually misplaced the power pole here slightly. Uh, but as you can see, we are getting some steel. Uh, very little amounts right now. Of course, half the thing is unpowered. Uh, but it is working. So now you can kind of see it in practice. We have the iron ore on this top side and the coal on this side, very much like this. Uh, and in this one, we have the coal on the close side here and the steel outputting due to that inserter mechanic. Again, I'm always outputting on the far side over here. And this splitter is very nicely filtering out and kind of just shuffling over the steel to this belt, which is now running along our bus, just like that. So today, what we're going to do, uh, we could get some lights, optics here. Uh, quick note, uh, these two things here are not vanilla. Uh, I mentioned, I think, at, be at the beginning of the series, I am playing with one mod and one mod only, and that is called Afraid of the Dark, and that is simply to make uh, your viewing, viewing experience better. Uh, it just illuminates the area around me a bit more. Uh, it does also, though, add those lights. I don't use them, um, so we can just pretend they're not there. Uh, so this is, like I said, it's 100% vanilla aside from just the light thing, which doesn't really give me much benefit. It, it's mostly just so it's easier for you guys to see there on YouTube. Uh, so uh, today what we're going to work on is stuff for the military science. Uh, now let's finish up our little setup for the piercing ammunition here. That was quite quick. Uh, we could get lab research speed though. So this, th what this does, uh, is this unlocks more efficient research practices. So lab research speed plus 20%. Uh, so I think I mentioned this also near the beginning of the series. Uh, more labs, the more labs you have, the faster you can research. The effects do stack. Uh, so two labs are going to be twice as fast as one lab. Three labs should be three times as fast, four, four times, etc., etc. Uh, but then you can get research like this. Uh, and this goes up quite high as well to six tiers of this, uh, which will increase the research speed just globally uh, of just any lab, all labs. Uh, so we're going to get that. It does help quite a bit. Uh, so last time we got this coming in here, we're going to have this be iron uh, feeding this guy. Very simple, just takes iron. So let's just get that fed in here really quick to kind of, uh, you know, recenter ourselves in terms of where we're going with things and all that, I believe. Am I? Okay, I've actually put this one too far away there. Sometimes when all your lines aren't actually brought down, it makes it a little hard, uh, at least for me, to find where things need to be split off and underground. Uh, but we got that, and you can see we've created a situation here we don't really want. Um, that's just because it's created a curve. Just simply place a belt there, and it will continue on as we want it to. Uh, so this is going to output over here. Uh, we do need some inserters here. Uh, these. This really probably doesn't even need to be a fast inserter. We could conserve these. Uh, this one I will have it be just because it requires four iron. Uh, but this can output, and these are you know three second craft time. These inserters should be more than sufficient for that. Uh, as with this, uh, maybe these actually uh, six items. Yeah, I believe I did say the last episode these should actually be fast inserters. So. Uh, what's going to happen here? Now let's craft a few more of these guys. Uh, this is going to be a shared line now of uh, steel and copper, much like this belt of gears and iron. So now luckily we have steel uh, created. That's why that needed to be done first. Uh, this is obviously a bit of a mess here, uh, but I think we can go ahead and let's just underground that as well just to make this all uniform here like so bring this over and I think I'm going to do much like I did here and we're actually going to combine these down there rather than in the bus itself so we need to have this pulled back about here-ish and this one now uh, needs to come here and here and this will combine like so and then copper will come over here. We may actually want to reverse those, so I'm glad I didn't connect that. That's why sometimes I like to run my lines before I actually connect the resource flow to it, uh, because I might change my mind. So actually, we are in a situation now where we're getting uh, quite close to the bus. Uh, luckily, the rest of these lines are 
on this side, uh, but I actually created a situation here where we're dangerously close to interfering with our bus with our build. Um, in fact, we basically almost are in a sense. Um, so that is just something to be aware of when you're doing this. Uh, that's why I did place these a ways away from the bus. Uh, I, I would actually say in hindsight, placing them even farther back would have been uh, better. But we can go ahead and do this. And I think in this case, uh, so we're going to have four lines here. Again, I'm just holding shift for ghosts. This is a very good way to like quickly space, uh, see spacing of things as well, rather than having to place a belt and then maybe tear them up later or or just place them. Uh, so let's get a splitter right here, like so. And this again created that little weird situation that's completely fine. Uh, this can just come over here and then we'll connect the steel up. And this is now the resources we want. So we take these long-handed inserters, which again can reach this extra distance. And we're going to place these on these machines right here and get some power poles. Uh, I think I'm gonna actually snag a little bit of this steel here and build a few of these. Uh, this will be something we need to add to our hub uh, here in the not too distant future. Uh, so let's get these guys in there, need a couple more. And the next step then is going to be actually creating some stone brick because we're going to need that uh, here for these walls. Uh, now, a lot of times I will actually create stone brick up by my smelters. I will maybe add another smelter over here. Uh, but interestingly, uh, I think I, I found out when I was playing on my stream uh, the other day is people suggested to actually just run pure stone, raw stone on the bus and then smelt it where you need it. And I've not ever really done that before, uh, but it actually kind of turned out to be... Uh, you know, pretty pretty good and actually work out quite well. So I think we're going to uh, kind of apply that strategy here. Uh, and as you can see, this actually put that did not need that one there by habit. I just put it on every one of them. So let's just grab him. Uh, but there we go. So these are now getting what they need and uh, crafting uh, fairly slowly. Th th this one will eventually catch up. This ratio is correct. It may just take a moment here. Uh, they usually fill a machine, inserters fill a machine usually with double of what's needed, so like two times the craft amount uh, requirement. So that's kind of what you're seeing here. Uh, it does take a little bit to get started, but this should work. I'm going to cut that bit off there. And we're now getting this piercing ammunition. Uh, so we need to run stone. Uh, we are going to have one line of steel, and I think we can safely have uh, this line be stone and potentially this line be coal. Uh, research finished, thank goodness. Uh, we could just get another one. Uh, I think, is there much water in our way? There's not. Landfill is basically a, a thing where you can take stone and create, uh, well, uh, li like land and, uh, and fill in water. Uh, so you can basically terraform and create terrain on water. Uh, an important note with this though, is you cannot do the opposite. You cannot uh, place water like, you know, expand your water areas uh, or, or, or pick up landfill even. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. It, you may want to be careful sometimes when you place this, if you need to be very accurate or end up later maybe not wanting it, you cannot get rid of it without using mods. Uh, and then I think we're actually going to get this. So advanced material processing, and this actually unlocks the level two furnace uh, in the steel furnace is what this is. Uh, luckily, this is the exact same footprint as the stone furnace. Uh, and it's fairly simple to make, you know, some stone and steel, uh, but it actually has a crafting speed of two, which is, if we take a look here, it is actually double that of a stone furnace. A stone furnace is crafting speed of one. So a crafting speed of two uh, means that we can essentially double our setup without actually expanding the size of it uh, by just replacing the stone ones with the steel ones. Uh, of course, we do want to expand it. We will need to uh, eventually, but using those stone furnaces, particularly for something like steel, uh, or sorry, using those steel furnaces on a steel build, uh, because again, using stone furnaces, the build can get extremely long. Uh, it's uh, quite quite helpful. Now, these are not actually working. Uh, I believe I have goofed something up over there. We can go check that out here really quick. Just get some belts. And we're going to go place some miners here on stone. 
Uh, also, this episode, I think we may need to do a little more combat. That base is uh, barely being hit by our pollution, and it's it's very possible it's going to trigger an attack. So let's investigate why these are not working. Uh, it's very possible that I have goofed this up. Uh, okay, so these are the ones that I had actually put a uh, plate in manually to get a little steel to make the power poles. Uh, so obviously we cannot insert steel beams into something making steel beams. <laughs> so I forgot I had had those in there. That makes sense now why that was not working. And actually while we're over here, let's just add a few more power poles to this to try to, uh, try to kick on the rest of this production here. Let's just get that right there. And there we go. We are good to go on that. So proceeding over here to stone. Unfortunately, there are a few trees in our way, but I think we can probably route around it. This is a very old looking tree right there. It's a cliff in our way too. Uh, we actually finished, I never selected the research, I suppose. Uh, let's pick this up and set up some mining here on the stone. Uh, we don't necessarily need a lot, uh, but a healthy amount would be good because uh, stone brick actually requires uh, more than one stone, multiple stone. It requires two stone to make a stone brick, uh, you know, opposed to the typical like one ore for these two things. Uh, so you do actually need more than you might think. So let's go ahead and place that down there. Uh, I am still going to use these small power poles here and there until we really fully get our uh, medium power poles in full production uh, automatically, just because they are a little bit uh, harder to make, a little bit more expensive. Make sure those are all powered. They're not quite. Let's see if we can... Can't quite get that guy powered there. Okay, so this needs to run uh, over here. I I don't want to run it across an, an ore patch. You probably will have figured this out already, but running things that aren't the ore that is being mined across an ore patch uh, just creates issues later on because, of course, you will probably have to move those, you know, to actually place the miners to, to get that ore. Uh, so uh, this is slightly awkward here. Uh, we can maybe do something like this. So, yeah, you cannot actually place on cliffs. There is a thing in item you can research later on that will allow you to remove cliffs. Quite nice. That requires some oil products, which is a little ways away, not too far away. And I'm leaving this space here, again, just for the pure principle of leaving space, but also I suspect I may want another iron line squeezed in here. Uh, so I'm going to run this over here, and I'm actually going to bring this down this way. It's not the prettiest thing, uh, but we do know that this needs to actually end up on this right side of our steel line on our bus. So come down here. Now you may notice I'm not leaving room for another steel setup. Uh, I probably It's probably going to be a little while before I expand into another steel setup uh, simply because uh, again it requires so much iron ore that you know we're going to actually have a difficult time feeding this expanded one once I make these steel furnaces especially. Uh, so let's bring this over here and we're going to now make some stone. Oops, got caught on the belt there. And we're going to make this stone right over here. It's a very simple build uh, but you know again there's nothing wrong with building it over here, like by your other smelting, smelting your stone into brick and then putting the brick on your main bus here, your, your production flow. Uh, but I just kind of want to change it up for the sake of doing something different, and I quite liked it when I did it on stream a few days ago. Uh, so this is also a very viable option. Uh, actually, let's set up first, let's get our, our machine here making walls. Uh, we should only need one. Uh, this requires two walls every 10 seconds, and we have uh, five of these, so it's 10 walls every 10 seconds, which is a wall a second, and uh, a wall takes half a second to make. So uh, one machine could actually technically supply double what we need. Uh, it is, you know, quite expensive. It takes five stone brick, and remember, each brick takes two stone. So actually, each wall is going to take 10 stone. It's uh, a little bit deceiving, actually, how much... Uh, stone that takes. So we're going to use a fast inserter here to insert the uh, brick and uh, might as well use a fast inserter here. And now we're going to do this. It's getting a little a little crowded here, a little messy, but that's okay. Uh, this is a slight problem. Uh, one thing we can do is unlock these belts for a farther reach distance. Uh, we can of course find some ways around this. There's always ways to 
route around things, it may not be ideal. I, I mean, I see a way to do it I already. I, I don't want to do it that way, though. Uh, shoot. Hmm. I think we're gonna have to do it this way temporarily. Uh, we could actually... No, we don't. This is a little bit longer. Uh, the way I did see, just so you guys can see what I was seeing, is to underground this and then pull this underground backwards and have it go something like that. And then we can run it, this belt, through here and easily underground there. Uh, the reason I don't like doing that is it just seems like kind of a needless underground for our main bus. It just seems a little bit silly. certainly doesn't hurt anything. Uh, the alternative here is some extra belt, uh, but we can just have this come over here and we can just sideload onto that section. Uh, so now, now that we have this, we can take our stone brick, which we will make right now. And I don't have an exact ratio for this. I mean, we could easily come up with one. Probably we may not be able to supply this, uh, knowing that we uh, need one a second. So we basically need five stone brick a second. Uh, we can take this guy here, realizing that it takes 3.2 seconds. Uh, so, you know, we need, well, that's actually, oh, well, let's see, that creates two stone. And then this takes five stone brick. So we need we need five stone brick a second. Stone brick takes two. So we need 10 stone a second, basically. Uh, and it takes three seconds. So theoretically, if my math is correct, we would need like 15-ish uh, smelters doing this. I don't... Uh, obviously, we have the room and we have the smelters. Uh, the concern here is, do we have the ability to supply that much stone? And we probably could if we added some more miners to stone, uh, but we actually probably could, honestly. I think I think we'll just see how it works as is right now. I'm actually going to increase this. I keep running out of belt, so we're just going to raise this to 500 here. You can easily just click on an inserter. And, or, or whatever the entity may be that's wired up and, and change any of these things, the, the uh, mode of operation or the item or the amount. So pretty straightforward there, just throw a quick increase in. Uh, I'm actually glad I'm working on this side of the base because if we do get attacked, I will be prepared. Uh, I'm actually going to handcraft a few of these. I'm gonna actually shift left click to take these out of my inventory. I'm gonna right click to cancel these because uh, no need to make a bunch more of these level 1 firearms when I actually have some already created. Saves a little bit of time there, a little bit of resources. So we're going to run this here. Uh, this is going to be a shared stone and coal wine. So we, of course, do need to get some coal over this way. Uh, let's just add some more for the sake of making this even. And while we create those inserters, let's get some coal. So coal we can have share or sorry well share this section of four and this one's going to be coal here now we're in a little bit of an awkward situation where yeah we're in a bit of an awkward situation here where we already have two separate lines coming off of our coal we have one section that goes to smelting and we have an entirely separate section that comes for uh power here. I, I lost the word. Uh, adding a third one is something I really don't feel comfortable doing. It just makes expanding any of them uh, quite difficult and, and just becomes a little bit messy. Uh, now, considering that this is just for smelting at this point, I think it is uh, reasonable to pull coal off of this line to send on the bus. Now, if I, say, decide to send this to uh, something that requires coal later on, there is something in oil that does without giving too many spoilers, uh, that does require a fair bit of coal. This would not be a very good idea, and I will likely need to uh, add a supplementary line or get rid of this one and just add a whole new one, uh, maybe even from a different patch. Uh, but since this is just currently going to another smelting setup, a quite small one in the grand scheme of things, I don't think this is a problem. Uh, just to be safe, I think adding a couple more miners would be good. Uh, so I'm going to do that. And also speaking of ore, someone asked in the last video in the comments, uh, someone asked a question in regards to uh, ore patches. They asked, 
What do they do once their ore runs out? Uh, and if that's all they get, uh, and, and stuff in regards to that. And the answer is that, uh, as you can see, there are actually ore patches scattered all around the place. We've not even revealed that much area, and we already see another iron patch here, and another copper patch here, quite a large one, another copper patch up here, and quite a large iron patch down here, as well as, you, it's easy to miss, just one little oil patch right here. It's not very good. In fact, that's our starting one, which is quite concerning. Uh, having one oil uh, well right here for the entirety of a base is pretty bad, especially considering the distance that it is away from us. Uh, so I think we should probably actually add some more radars, pot uh, potentially in different parts of our base uh, that, you know, we can use to reveal more area. So, because yeah, the, the we're going to get to oil here pretty soon, and this is just not going to be anywhere near what we need. Uh, in terms of radar, I think I did mention it, but just to reiterate, uh, the radars kind of have a uh, progression bar here you can see there at the very top not the bottom one not the electricity but the top one you can see it's slowly progressing and uh, once it hits that progression it will reveal another chunk uh, we will probably be able to see uh, it revealed another chunk down here so it's currently revealing this section just revealed this one it keeps it um, actually fully revealed uh, for a short time and then goes away as you can see and you know the more radars you have the more chunks will be revealed because they're kind of working in tandem, uh, much like labs. Uh, so I think just throwing them around your base is a good idea. However, uh, something that I think is very important to mention is in terms of radars and attacks on your base, uh, while, again, nothing except pollution actually triggers attacks in the first place, uh, once attacks are triggered, uh, the enemies, the biters, uh, really tend to try and target uh, two things, either pollution generating structures, uh, so the higher pollution, uh, you know, generation there is, so things like miners and your boilers are going to be usually pretty highly targeted. Um, also, though, they're going to target uh, military structures, and radar is considered a military structure, it is in the military tab. So wherever you place these radars, they're going to be a fair bit of a biter magnet, uh, in a sense. So I would suggest defending them, especially if you put them near production, as I have, uh, because this is going to draw enemies directly towards it, uh, especially in this case, since the enemies are actually to the east here, and this would probably be their closest uh, high-priority target. Uh, so that's uh, something to keep in mind, is, is those radars will draw enemies directly to them. So, you know, do be very careful when, when you place those around your base and make sure to defend them. Otherwise, they will be destroyed and anything around them will be destroyed. Uh, I brought this out here partly for habit and partly just to kind of get an idea of where exactly we need to bring these lines in. So, just put that there. This guy can go like that. Bring this one over. Let's uh, get this. Now, these underground belts, you can actually, uh, much like power poles, you can hold click and drag and it will just place them at their max length which is very nice for things like this. When you when you know you have an open space, you know you're going to need them at max length just for a while there. Uh, this is actually a very nice feature. Uh, I don't take advantage of it enough, but as you can see, I'm just holding left click and walking, and it makes it far easier, except for put it in the wrong spot. I misjudged there a little bit. There we go. And this will give us our colt. So this is now going to provide uh, stone brick, and we can throw some power down here. And the last thing we're going to need, this actually though, fortunately we don't have uh, the steel, but luckily we do have steel right here. I'm gonna say this would actually be a fantastic opportunity to use these power poles though, so they can power both sides instead of needing a power pole on each side. We can do that, and they actually power everything perfectly. Throw one more down here, and there we go. So there's the walls. Now, uh, the last part of this we need, let's finish the research, let's, uh, let's see, gates are to add into walls, so you and trains and such can leave. Uh, I think damage, uh, projectile damage is really great, this increases the damage of your bullets, your gun turrets, and your shotgun shell damage, so gun turrets and bullets kind of have two separate damage things, so they can stack on each other, which is quite nice. Uh, extend this out here, there we go. We are actually being attacked at the moment. This is 
bit of a problem. Hopefully we don't lose anything too important. Uh, it looks like we did. I've filtered this, so I'm going to clear that filter. Uh, we lost a few things, some belt. That's no big deal. We lost three belt and a power pole. Uh, so there we go. Also, I think while it doesn't hurt a lot to panic, I would still say don't panic too much when you get attacked. I mean, obviously you need to go deal with it, uh, but, you know, I, I was running down there as fast as my character can run, and uh, I needed to make sure I had everything set up so I didn't die in the process. With that few biters, I wouldn't. I, I, I actually could have just meleeed them to death, um, which you can do uh, if you walk right up to them and, and hit attack, but... Uh, if, they were, if it were a larger group, uh, if I had just run in there without setting myself up, I probably would have died, which in my opinion is worse than losing some belts and such. Uh, so the last thing we need here are some grenades. And these are actually going to be very hard to supply, probably, uh, because they take a lot of coal. Uh, they take eight seconds to craft, first off, uh, which looking at this, uh, you know, that means we have five machines here, uh, which means and it takes 10 seconds each. Uh, so I believe if my math works out, we need one every two seconds. If we had 10 machines, it'd be one a second total. So uh, one every two seconds. And these guys here, these these uh, just take eight seconds. So I need four machines doing this. It's quite a lot. Um, I am questioning my, my math on this. Five machines. So... That's 10 seconds. I believe it, yeah. I believe it's one every two seconds. Um, but even five of these is going to be potentially quite difficult to supply because that's a that's 10 coal every eight seconds on top of the coal we're using for everything else. So uh, I usually do tend to have slight supply issues with these for a little while until I can really beef up my base. Uh, oh, hello. So there we go. Attacks as suspected. Uh, like I said, I'm very glad I'm working on this side of the base. So let's go ahead and set these. Oh, I had the wrong thing copied. I didn't fully copy that one. Shift right click. There we go. Shift left click. Uh, and you'll notice I set my inserters up differently sometimes. Uh, so just I just note this uh, just because some people may have noticed. These inserters I've put in the middle of the machine. These I've put in sets of two. So one on this far side and one on this far side. Uh, it kind of just depends. Uh, actually in a setup like this where it's an uneven number. Uh, much like the ammunition here. I do like putting them in the middle. I think it looks better like this, but in an uneven number, it usually doesn't look very great, in my opinion. So we're going to have another combined line. You'll you'll notice we, we use a lot of uh, multi-material lines uh, when building. Now, there's nothing wrong. We, we could simply just have one line of coal and one line of iron. And I've, actually, if there were a time to do that, it may be with the grenades, again, due to their heavy coal use. Uh, I believe that one belt will be enough, and even if it's not, we can upgrade to a faster transport belt, uh, which can move items quicker. In fact, twice as quick as yellow here, uh, if we need to. Uh, so you could add just a second belt for the second material and have a full belt of each using some of those long-handed inserters. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Obviously, more material cost up front with the belts and the inserters, uh, but I tend to just like to do this here uh, I think I think our main issue is actually going to be supplying the coal itself uh, it, it a good enough rate more so than the belt being able to keep up with that if that makes sense uh, so let's just run this here combine this maybe at the same spot here just so it looks maybe a little bit nicer and we'll just do that it's probably a bit silly I have to move that later bring this one over here <clears throat> and this guy is gonna come right here just get that spacing down. And then we're going to use our dragging technique. Again, that one's out of place. Almost threw me off there. And we'll connect this up and throw some power down. And now we have every single thing that we need for military science. Uh, however, I think this is potentially a good place to stop the episode. Uh, well, maybe. <laughs> I say that. However, we have everything we need. So... This is grenades. Uh, we need a belt that comes through here. Um, I could have it run the other direction. I could bring it actually up above and just have this belt run the other way. However, 
Uh, we can make these fast underground belts, which have a reach of 7, opposed to the reach of 5. Uh, they do require a very, very large amount of gears and iron. Uh, you can see there a total of 97.5 iron. Uh, most of that's for the 40 gears they require. Uh, but we can take advantage of this and use this here. Now, of course, it is maybe a little bit silly to invest as much material to underground when we could just simply underground this, as I showed you earlier. Uh, primarily, I'm doing this uh, just for example, to show you that you can take advantage of these different length belts and kind of combine them uh, to, to stretch farther distances if you need to. Uh, again, these are very expensive. Uh, Material-wise, would have been much better to do this way, but... Uh, so even though this is, uh, it can reach farther, it's also faster, and, you know, matches the speed of this fast transport belt at 30 items a second. Uh, it doesn't really break anything, it will almost, it'll kind of like slingshot through these items very quickly, uh, but then they just go back to the speed here of the yellow belt, and there's really nothing wrong, nothing, nothing bad happens there, it doesn't really mess anything up. Uh, in fact, it gets in there faster altogether, because there's like one little section where they'll move faster, uh, so you do have that going. Uh, again, with this being an uneven number of machines, I'm going to space my inserters out much like this. And there we go. And now we will actually need some long-handed inserters because uh, we need to grab from this belt here. Uh, and put those right there. Expand this one out. And if we throw some power down, we now have military science. So this was fantastic. I'm actually quite happy. I wasn't very sure if we were going to get our military science done this episode, uh, but it turns out we managed to. Uh, also, as you can see, there one last little mechanic to touch on to end this episode out. Uh, you can just, uh, with a lot of things, most things in the game, you can uh, re quick replace or just place the new thing, the upgraded version, over the old one. As you saw there, I just simply placed this medium power pole on top of the small one and it just uh, upgraded it, essentially. Uh, you can do the same with underground belts and splitters and normal belts. Uh, just place it on top. Same with assembling machines, just place it on top. Uh, same with uh, steel furnaces to stone furnaces. Uh, now, there is a furnace after this, the electric furnace, and you cannot do that because it's a different size. The actual footprint of it is larger. Uh, so, you, you, as you might imagine, you can't just put it on top and automatically upgrade. Uh, but for most things, their footprint will remain the same, and you can just place them directly on top of, and it will be a quick upgrade. Uh, which is very, very nice. I think we're actually going to get another damage upgrade just to help ensure our safety here. And uh, I'm going to run this just uh, for completion sake here at the tree. And I am very happy with what we got done today, folks. Uh, next episode, I think we'll expand our mall a little bit to add a few more things such as inserters and some power poles. We will definitely want this power pole production in there. Maybe expand our smelting a little bit. I know for a fact we need to expand our power, as you can see. Our satisfaction is not fully met. You can even mouse over a power pole and see that there, uh, or a machine, and it will pretty much provide the same information. Uh, so very important there to just once in a while hover over things and, and take note of that. Uh, but next episode, we'll probably expand our mall a little bit, expand some things, and uh, potentially start some work on oil uh, as well, which is a very, very big process. It's going to span several episodes. Oil is... Uh, a pretty big stepping stone in the game. It can stump a lot of people, uh, as with the science pack that comes uh, after oil that you need oil products for. Um, so that's going to take a little bit. We'll try to go in depth on that because that does usually hold a lot of people back. Uh, it's kind of a barrier of entry, if you will. And uh, I'm hoping our radars can do some good work and find oil because we're going to be struggling uh, a lot with this low amount of oil right here. And I believe that is going to do it. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. And if you did, uh, a like is much appreciated, uh, as always, since it can help other people find this and hopefully help them as well. And welcome to all the new players who are start finding the game. I hope you're having a great time. I hope my content's helping you. And if you're new to the channel, welcome as well. I'm really glad to have you. Feel free to subscribe if you aren't, so you can uh, keep up on all the new content, which there will be a lot of. And as a last note to touch on, I have had multiple requests to go over... Uh, to make a little tutorial series on the tutorial missions in the game, which may seem a little bit odd, but I've had multiple requests. Um, so I am actually going to do that. I'm going to record the first episode of that tonight, which should go out late tonight, uh, quite a few hours after this episode is out. So if you're around, keep an eye out for that. And uh, I, I did want to let you know that I am uh, fulfilling that request. So 
Thank you guys so much. Leave your thoughts and feedback below as always. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.